Hello and welcome to another episode of the Kid Stories Podcast. I'm Phil Bechtel. Be sure to click the link in the show notes to visit the Kid Stories Podcast YouTube channel for all kinds of fun stuff. Well, let's get into some shout outs. Liam from Lansing, Michigan made a dragon with magnetiles. That was awesome, Liam. I think if you were a character from the stories, you would be a goofball shopkeeper by day, and by night, you would train a ninja rat army to be the Cliffside City Ninja Rat Dojo. Thanks for listening, Liam. And Eddie from Christchurch, New Zealand is a big fan. He drew a picture of Ben Ben wearing the fart belt. Awesome drawing, Eddie. I think if you were a character from the stories, you'd be a protector of the dragon stones, and you would live on Dragon Island to protect the mysterious stones. Thanks for listening, Eddie. Today's story is titled Time's Up, Part 3. The Bizzards had spent weeks slowly aging the Valley Town Dojo and the Southern Swamps Dojo from the comfort of their camp deep within the Southern Swamps. Meanwhile, some heroes were coming to realize that strange things were afoot in the valley. Tim and Ray now zoomed on their scooters to Hooper's goofballs in search of two young heroes who may be able to lend a hand. As the ninjas neared the shop, they saw Auden and Tristan sitting out front. Well, they weren't sitting, exactly. Tristan, a human-sized dragon, was leaning back in his chair, his mouth open, drooling on the ground. His brother Auden sat across the table from him, face down on the table, snoring gently. Their table was a mess of destroyed goofball platters. It was clear that they had ordered a variety of goofballs. There were crumbs of all colors and many empty plates scattered on the tabletop. Tim and Ray walked right up to the table. Are these dudes asleep? Tim whispered. Yeah, looks like they got goofballed, answered Ray. Happens to the best of us. Excuse me, Tim said loudly. Auden and Tristan woke with a start, jostling the table and sending the dishes crashing to the ground. Tim and Ray stumbled back as the two brothers looked around and rubbed their eyes. Oh, man, how, how long have we been out? The dragon asked. No idea. We just got here and y'all were sleeping, answered Tim. I'm Tim and this is Ray. We're from the... Oh, yeah, you're from the Valley Town Dojo, interrupted Auden. I'm Auden and this is my brother Tristan and this is my lion Speedmane. Speedmane? Auden looked around, but there was no lion. Speedmane! Hey, Speedy! Tim and Ray looked around, wondering if Auden was still in some goofball fever dream when a real lion came barreling down the street, stopping at Auden and putting his huge paws in his lap. Auden gave his pet some pets. Anyway, listen, have you heard anything about what's been going on with the dojos lately? asked Tim. Word is getting around about some strange happenings at our dojo and at the Southern Swamps dojo. Auden and Tristan began cleaning up the broken plates on the ground while they chatted with Tim and Ray. Nah, we haven't really heard much about anything, said Tristan. We've been on vacation lately. We took a goofball tour all across the valley, checking out the best goofballs on the island. Yeah, this is our last stop here at Hooper's, and we, uh, uh we went a little overboard, I guess said Auden. But they were having specials on, well, everything. So we got everything. And, um, anyway, what's this issue at the dojos? We're not sure, said Ray. Us ninjas at the Valley Town Dojo all started aging, like, a lot. We all got old and tired in just a couple weeks. And then we heard that the same thing was happening to the ninjas at the Southern Swamps Dojo. Auden and Tristan then noticed that Tim and Ray were looking older than they thought they were. Auden and Tristan had never really worked directly with the ninjas of Valleytown, but they knew they were a fairly young group. And Tim and Ray did not look young right now. Oh, said Auden. Yeah, you do look... old. Yeah, and we feel old too, said Tim. Whatever this is, it's no joke. We've got the Academy kids scouting out around the two affected dojos, but we need you two to, uh, I don't know, see if you can help us figure this thing out. Sure, sure, said Tristan, patting his huge, goofball-filled dragon belly. We're, we're heading back down to our home in the southern swamps today. 
we'll check what's going on down there. Could be the Red Cloaks or the Bizzards or the Cave Trolls or some new awful thing. You two live in the swamps? asked Ray. Well, we have been for a few months now, said Auden. That old crooked wizard's tower had been abandoned, so we went ahead and moved in. We cleaned the place up nice. Maybe you guys can come by for goofballs someday. Ooh, sounds good, said Tim. We'll bring the tacos. But for now, let's focus on us not getting like a hundred years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, said Auden. We'll get on it right away and let you know if we discover anything useful. Tim and Ray thanked the brothers and sped off in the direction of the rock fields. Auden and Tristan finished cleaning up their mess and paid for the broken dishes. So I guess we just head back home, said Auden. Let's swing by the Red Cloak's little village first, see if we notice anything strange. Then we go further south to the Bizzard camp. Tristan nodded. The two brothers lumbered off out of town, slowly at first, since they were stuffed with goofballs. But after a few miles of walking, they were back to normal, feeling better and making good time. The two snuck into the swamps near the Red Cloak's little village. They crept through the thick foliage all around the town without being seen and without seeing anything of consequence. So this is just another day at the Red Cloak's whispered Tristan from deep beneath some thick shrubbery. I'm not noticing anything unusual. Same, agreed Auden. Nothing strange here. I say we hit up the Bizzard camp and go from there. As you probably predicted, their trip to the Bizzard camp uncovered a lot more than nothing. As the brothers hid, crouched down in the undergrowth of the southern swamps, looking upon the Bizzard's camp, they estimated that the camp itself had doubled in size. The Bizzards all looked busy, like they were working together, which was quite strange. The Bizzards seemed more motivated now than they had ever been. Generally, this group of Bizzards were very volatile. A leader would emerge, promising power and riches and magical artifacts if everyone else joined them. But the other Bizzards would eventually become impatient and revolt, and they would be leaderless for a bit, and then the cycle would continue with another temporary leader. It had been like this with the Bizzards for decades. They were super powerful, but they were always fighting with each other and could never really put it all together to be considered a real threat. But now, as Auden and Tristan looked on from their hiding places, the Bizzards seemed much more competent. They were working together to great effect. And there, in the middle of the Bizzard camp, was a table that many of the other Bizzards seemed to be huddled around. Auden climbed up a tree to get a better look. He revealed a telescope that he extended to about a foot long. He looked through the telescope and saw what the Bizzards were so interested in. He shimmied back down the tree and whispered to Tristan, They've got some kind of crystal ball rigged up to a, like a, a small clock or something, he said. They keep looking at the crystal ball and... And it, it looked like images of the ninjas were flashing in the crystal ball. The Valley Town ninjas and the Southern Swamps ninjas? I don't know. Okay then, let's go hit the books and see if we find out anything useful, said Tristan. They intended to return to the Crooked Tower to research what they had seen. But before they could, Auden's lion, Speedmane, crawled on his belly to the brothers and growled quietly. He bit Auden's pant leg and tugged at him. Did you find something, Speed? asked Auden. What'd you find? Speedmane crept silently through the swamps and the brothers followed. They went around a part of the camp that had just been built. It was so new that it hadn't been there when the boys left for their goofball tour a couple weeks ago. The tall wooden fences were not completed and there were gaps where they could see into the camp. Speedmane stopped and stared into the camp and the brothers followed his gaze. On a small wooden stage stood a bizzard and a cave troll. The troll seemed uneasy and angry. It was clear he was a prisoner there. The brothers were too far away to clearly hear what was being said. The bizzard on the stage appeared to be in charge. He was yelling out to the crowd. He held something up in his hand and everyone cheered. Whatever was in his hand was, was small no bigger than an apple, and it glowed white. 
Quickly, the bizzard threw the small white object down to the ground at his feet, and the stage erupted in a ball of smoke and lightning. Bright white stalks of lightning crackled all around the bizzard, and the cave troll, and everything became obscured by thick white smoke. The lightning crackled louder and brighter, so bright that Auden and Tristan had to cover their eyes even from far away. And then the lightning fizzled out, and the smoke drifted away, and the cave troll was gone, and only the bizzard remained. But he was different. His fur was green, and he was twice his usual size. His typical bear teeth now stuck out from his mouth at odd angles like a troll's, and his eyes were dark and cold. The bizzard lifted his hands into the air and roared. All the other bizzards around him roared and threw their hands up. Did we just watch a cave troll and a bizzard combine? asked Auden. Tristan nodded his head. I can't believe what I just saw. That new bizzard I is massive. Imagine if they all combined with trolls. Imagining all these bizzards twice their size and filled with troll crazy sent chills down their spines. To combine the raw power of a troll with the magical abilities of a bizzard was creating some evil ultra beast. Without saying another word, the brothers crept off back to their home in the crooked wizard's tower. The place was centuries old, and no one really knew who built it or who lived there originally. It had always just been there. Hundreds of different people had lived there through the years, and it was filled with the remnants of past residents, especially books. Hundreds, thousands of books. They filled bookcases and shelves, and books were stacked on every step of the winding staircase. Auden and Tristan often consulted this mess of knowledge whenever they were stumped with something. So now they poured through pages and pages, reading as fast as they could to discover the origin and effect of the crystal ball and this mysterious clock. The end. Thanks for listening, friends. The website is kidstoriespodcast.com. Send all your drawings and shout-out requests to kidstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Adios.